Hey teachers, this is a lesson I created on the Articles of Confederation. I was having a hard time uh, before making this topic interesting for my senior government class, and so I thought we'd try simulation so they could really see how ineffective these articles were. Uh, just a quick note, the descriptions I created for each state, the situations are in, a lot of those are fictional, just things I made up to create conflict in the articles, but some of them are true as well. Uh, feel free to edit those any way you want to make it more historically accurate. I attached the document to, in the description box of this YouTube video if you want to download all the resources and use it in your class. To prepare for this lesson, it helps that the students have some background information about the Revolutionary War and some of the causes of that, and it also helps if they have a bit of information about the Articles of Confederation themselves. I created another YouTube video lesson on this. You're welcome to use that for that um, information. Uh, but to get this lesson started, you'll want to make 13 copies of the simulation packet so that each state has one of those. I prefer to set up my desks in a circle, but it can work in any way you want to choose. It also helps to create labels for each state so uh, that students know who they're talking to. And then you'll need to divide your class uh, into states. I did this simply just by uh, creating numbered cards, 1 through 13, one for each state, and handing those out to students. Um, most of my states had two students to a state because I had a class of 27, and I had one state with three. So this is the arrangement I use in my class. I'm lucky enough to have big desks, uh, but it could work in a lot of different arrangements. I also project the problem, the current problem we're working on, on my projector so all students can see that. And I also write on the board the rules of Congress so they know what powers they have and what powers each state has. Once students are in the room, I begin the lesson by describing to them that we are going to be uh, participating in a simulation of the Articles of Confederation and that uh, they'll be able to see how effective or ineffective this system of government was. We begin by discussing the powers that Congress has and the powers that the individual states have. Each packet has these powers listed, but I also write them on the board. And so I explain to students that for the group of, you know, that makes up Congress, they'll have to reach 9 out of 13 votes to make a decision. And if they want to change the articles, they're going to have to have a unanimous vote of 13 out of 13. I explain to them that Congress can declare war, they can raise an army, but that they have to get those troops from the individual states. They cannot tax citizens, that they have to get money from each state, so states have to be willing to donate that money. And that uh, to allow a new state to join the Confederacy, they need a 9 out of 13 vote. And then I also talk about the powers they have as an individual state, and many of these powers come up in their descriptions as they read about their state. Uh, but I, I make sure I specify that they cannot wage war with anyone without an agreement from Congress, which would take 9 out of 13 votes, um, and that they have the ability to give money and troops to Congress if they choose, but they don't have to, and that they have the right to tax their citizens. Once I've set up the situation for students, I give them a chance to look over the simulation packet with their partner. And I tell them you need to study your state to see what the current situation is in your state, how much money your state has, how many troops it has available to give to Congress. And I also tell them to study the other state's situations. And finally, I direct them to the problems that we're going to discuss during the debate. And those are on the last page of the packet. While they're doing that, I tell them to form an opinion about each of those problems and to think about what they might do. After students have had five or ten minutes to look over the packet, we begin the debate. We present problem one, and we go around the room and hear from each state uh, their opinion on that problem and what they would want to do. I also give students a chance to respond to other states' opinions and to try to convince uh, certain states to take certain actions. So, for example, problem one is loosely based on Shays' Rebellion. We've got Massachusetts dealing with a rebellion, and they are asking Congress to help them by sending troops. Uh, they're requesting 1,000 troops and $2,000. And so I explained to students during this phase that there's two decisions that need to be made. One, as a Congress, we need to agree to send troops. 
So we have to try to acquire 9 out of 13 votes. Once we've done that, we actually have to raise the troops. So each uh, state has to be willing to contribute some of their troops and their money. What typically happens is we get enough votes to uh, allow troops to be sent, but then each state is not willing to send enough troops, and the 1,000 troops is not met, or the money uh, that the request is not met. And it's purposely designed to be this way, because I want to demonstrate to students that with the Articles of Confederation, each state was really looking out for themselves, and that it was very difficult to get anything done. Once we've worked our way through the first problem, and usually it fails, we then move on to the second problem to see if they can uh, make a decision on that, and then finally the third. By the end of this, students should really see that it's a very ineffective system, the Articles of Confederation, um, because it allows too much power to each individual state, and it's too difficult to get anything passed with the 9 out of 13 requirements or the 13 out of 13 requirement for amendments. After the activity is complete, I direct students to the uh, post-discussion questions at the end of the packet. And you can use these any way you want. Um, I usually have my students reflect on these by writing out their answers. Um, and then we discuss so that they can really understand the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. Well, I hope you guys have fun with this activity. Uh, my students really got into it. And uh, let me know how it goes. Thanks.